Hi, I'm Blaine Davis. While a national holiday commemorates Dr. Martin Luther King and movies portray the lives of Jackie Robinson and Malcolm X, the civil rights leader that, in my opinion, did the most to end legal segregation is Thurgood Marshall. Beginning with his legal work with the NAACP in 1934, oftentimes at great personal risk, Marshall won case after case to bring justice to Black Americans, culminating with his victory in the historic Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision in 1954. Marshall, more than anyone else, brought an end to legal segregation in the United States. Appointed to the Supreme Court in 1967, Marshall joined the fraternity of liberal justices that guaranteed the constitutional rights of all Americans. Please join me Tuesday, November 7th at 10 o'clock at the new Rancho Bernardo Oasis. Together, we'll explore the remarkable life of the man that championed civil rights for all Americans. Hi, my name is Suda House, and I'm the instructor for digital photography, camera capture and composition. The course begins at the San Diego Oasis campus in La Mesa on Tuesday, November the 7th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. We will cover how digital cameras work, how digital capture and exposure renders the image. We'll also look at good composition and vantage points and other elements that make for a meaningful and dynamic image. We'll cover such genres as portraiture, landscape, night photography, issues when you travel, and of course, everyday images that you capture in the making of memories. I hope you can join me for the course. Hope to see you then. Well, hey, everybody. Glad to see you again. I'm here to invite you to a fantastic talk on Cuba. If you've not been to Cuba, and I doubt that you have, because it's been very, very hard to get into until President Obama worked out a deal with the Cuban government to allow cruise ships to come in. That's amazing. So I've been there twice during that very narrow window of being able to get in. We could only spend one day in Havana. That was part of the deal. But other than that, you have to be a religious group or some a community kind of a group. It's, it's a little bit harder to get in that way. What we're going to go through is the history. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the geology, but focusing, of course, on uh, when the Spanish came in. We're gonna talk about the indigenous people, uh, let you know what they were doing during this uh, this time period as well. We're gonna tell you the how nice Havana was. Havana, you could equate to the Las Vegas of the Caribbean. It was a place that Americans with, with money would go over and just have a great time, the music, the food. They were just really, really enjoying themselves, but all good things tended to come to end. So we know a couple guys named uh, Castro and Che Guevara. They started a revolution against uh, against the main government. And that's where we're going to learn a bit more about Castro and how he developed and how he became a communist uh, communist country. So we're going to segue on a bit more, getting a little more modern with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Fortunately, President Kennedy came in and negotiated with uh, Khrushchev and they pulled the missiles out. But we've had an embargo around Cuba that's been in effect since 1960. And that's why you won't see anything going in there uh, at all, products and whatnot from the United States. Other countries go there freely, Canada, Europeans, et cetera. But unfortunately, only through that opening that we had on the cruise ships uh, were we allowed to go in there. So that's all been, been changed. Then we're going to talk about the town itself, let you see some of the people, let you see the architecture. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with uh, everything a lot of people want to go, and that's get uh, Cuban cigars. So I'm going to take you through a, a cigar plant and tell you all about, all about how they do that. Old cars is a big, big part of it for me. And uh, I thought I'd see 20, 25. There's no cars newer than 1960 there. So they fix them up. They keep them going. Uh, and they were just fantastic. They were everywhere. So I want to share that. That's something that Havana is certainly known for. So I want you to join me here to sign up for the class. And uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll going to Havana. Talk to you later. Hi, I'm Blaine Davies. On a cold winter day in 1903, two obscure brothers changed the world when Wilbur Wright took off in the first manned, heavier-than-air powered aircraft. What they lacked in formal training, Wilbur and Orville Wright 
more than made up for in intellectual curiosity, hard work, and determination. Risking their lives with often dangerous experimental flights, these bicycle mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, discovered how to successfully build and fly the world's first man-powered aircraft. Please join me Monday, November 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, when beginning with their early experiments in their bicycle shop, we explore how step-by-step -step the Wright brothers launched the age of aviation. Hi everyone, I'm Peter Boland inviting you to join me this coming Friday and every Friday for Friday Reflections here at San Diego Oasis through the magic of our Zoom machines. Let's scratch down below the surface of our ordinary lives for hidden treasure and let's root back into the world's wisdom traditions for tools that we can wield to build a path out of this craziness toward our best life. That's what we do every Friday at Friday Reflections. See you there.